told anyone what you meant to do? No. Did you meet anyone along your way coming or going? No, no one. You're quite sure of this? Yes. Quite sure. Very well. Now listen to me. Here's what you shall do. You will go to your room. When you get there, you will say you are not well, and you haven't been out since yesterday. Your nurse will say the same story. And I'll, uh, I'll dispose of those three men. Uncle Crayon, there's no reason to kill those three guards. He must know that I'm going to do it all over again tonight. Why did you try to bury your brother? I owed it to him. I had forbidden I owed it to him! Those who are not buried wander eternally and find no rest. Everybody knows that. I owed it to him to unlock the house of the dead where my father and mother were waiting. To welcome him. Polynices has burned his breath. Polynices was a rebel and a traitor, and you know it. He was my brother! You heard my edict. It was proclaimed throughout Thebes. You read my edict. It was posted on the city walls. Yes. And you knew the punishment I decreed for anyone who attempted to give the body burial. Yes, I know the punishment. Tell me, Antigone. Did you by any chance act on the assumption that, that a daughter of Oedipus, a daughter of Oedipus' stubborn pride, was perhaps above the law? I did not act on that assumption. Because if you had acted on that assumption, Antigone, you would have been deeply wrong. Nobody has a more sacred obligation to obey the law than those who make the law. You are a daughter of kings, a daughter of lawmakers. You must obey the law. Had I been a scullery maid washing my dishes when that law was run aloud to me, I should have scrubbed the greasy water from my arms and gone out in my apron to bury my brother. What nonsense! Had you been a scullery maid, there would have been no doubt in your mind the seriousness of my eating. You would have known that it meant death, and you would have been satisfied to weep for your brother in the kitchen. But you, you thought that because you were a royal line, that because you were my niece and you were going to marry my son, I shouldn't dare have you killed. You're mistaken. I never doubted for an instant that you would have me put to death. Pride of Oedipus. Oedipus and his headstrong pride. Well, I see your father in you, and I believe you. Of course you should think that I should have you killed. It would seem only a natural climax to your existence. Your father was like for the first times in their lives, I imagine. They had been spitted on one another's sword. The archive cavalry had trampled them down. They were matched to a pulp antiquity. I had the prettier of the two carcasses brought in and given a funeral. Now, I don't know which is which, and I assure you, I don't care. Why did you tell me all of this? You hold a treasure in your hands, Antigone. Life. And you were about to throw it away. Would it have been better to let you die a victim to that obscene story? Antigone, go find him. Go out, get married, quickly, be happy. Life is not what you think it is. Life is, life is a child playing around your feet. A tool you hold firmly within your grasp. A bench you sit upon in the evening, in your garden. Some people will tell you that, that that's not life. Right. That life is something else. They will tell you this because they want your strength, your fire. They want to make use of you. Don't listen to them. For it is a fact that at our old age, the only poor consolation we have is to discover that what I have just told you is true. Life is nothing more than the happiness you get out of it. Happiness? Not much of a word, is it? What kind of happiness do you foresee for me? Paint me the picture of your happy little Antigone. One of the unimportant sins I must commit before I'm allowed to sink my teeth into life and tear happiness from it. Tell me, to whom must I lie? Upon whom must I fawn? Whom must I sell myself? Whom do you want me to leave dying while I turn away my eyes? Continue to be quiet. Why do you tell me to be quiet? You say that life is so wonderful, all I want to know is what I must do in order to be able to say that myself. Do you love Haman? Yes. The Haman I love is hard and young and faithful and difficult to satisfy the same way I am. But if what I love in Haman is to be worn away like a stone step by the tread of the thing that you call life, by the thing that you call happiness, if Haman reaches the point where he stops growing pale with fear when I grow pale, 
If he stops thinking I've been killed in an accident when I'm five minutes late. If he stops feeling alone on earth when I laugh and he doesn't know why. If he too must learn to say yes to everything. Then no. No, I do not love him. You do not know what you are talking about. I do know what I'm talking about. It is you who can't hear me. I am too far away from you now talking to you from a kingdom you can't get into. With your preaching and your politics and your persuasive logic, I laugh at your smugness, crayon. Thinking that you can prove me wrong by telling me vile stories about my brothers. Or alter my purpose with your platitudes about happiness. It is your happiness too, Andrew. I spit on your idea of happiness. I spit on your idea of life. That life must go on, come what may. You are all like dogs that lick everything they smell. With your promise of a humdrum happiness, provided a person don't ask too much of life. If life must be a thing of fear and lying and compromise. If life cannot be free and incorruptible, then Creon, I choose death. Scream on, daughter of Oedipus, in your father's own voice. Yes, in my father's own voice, we come from a tribe that asks questions, and we ask them remorselessly until the bitter end. You have told me the filthy reasons why you cannot bury Polynices. Now tell me why I can't bury him. Because it is my order. The order of a coward king who desecrates the dead. Be quiet. If you could only see how ugly you were shrieking those words. Yes, I am ugly. Father was ugly too. The father became beautiful, and you know when? At the very end, when all of his questions had been answered. When he could no longer doubt that he had killed his own father and gone to bed with his own mother, when he was absolutely certain that he had to die to lift the plague from his people. Then he could smile. Then he was at peace almost. Then he became beautiful. 